are the MEN or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndromes and how do they impact on hyperparathyroidism and the incidence of hyperparathyroidism? I'm Dr. Bob Akhlarian from Center for Advanced Parathyroid Surgery. MENs are interesting. They are part of a genetic syndrome that gets passed on from parents to children. Now, we know of multiple genes that have been already recognized that are involved with uh, parathyroid diseases, and they're listed here, most of which can cause increased parathyroid function and hyperparathyroidism. But the most well-known ones are the syndromes, syndromes meaning involving multiple organs and having a multitude of symptoms, and those are the MEN syndromes. Now, the three most common MENs are the MEN1, MEN2A and MEN2B, and they have some crossover between these syndromes. So MEN1 is involved when there, there's a mutation in the menin gene, right there, you can see that. And 90% of the patients who have MEN1 will ultimately end up having parathyroid hyperplasia and hyperparathyroidism, right? They will also have tumors in their brain and the pituitary gland that produces hormones these are benign tumors usually, and they may have pancreatic tumors that produce a hormone called gastrin, so that can be checked. When someone presents, especially at a young age with hyperplasia, you have to do a full workup to make sure this person doesn't have an MEN syndrome, right? Or if there's a family history of hyperparathyroidism and so on, and the test is very easy. You just do a genetic testing for, for the menin gene and look for it. Now, MEN2A, also has hyperparathyroidism or parathyroid issues as a commonality. The incidence of hyperparathyroidism in MEN2A is significantly lower at 33%. Um, so it does happen, but it only a third of the patients will get hyperparathyroidism when they have it. Unfortunately, these patients tend to also get medullary thyroid cancer, which is majority of them, 98% of them, and they need early treatment for the medullary thyroid cancer. And so we need to look for the parathyroid issues at the same time and address that as well. They also can get pheochromocytomas, which are uh, other hormone producing tumors. And then MEN2B, which doesn't have hyperparathyroidism as part of it, but it can have the pheochromocytoma and, and the thyroid cancer as well. All of these have genetic mutations which can be easily tested. So I really encourage you, if you have hyperparathyroidism, and hyperparathyroidism runs in your family, to get genetic testing to look for all the other potential diseases that can go along with them and make sure that you, hopefully you don't have that. And if you do, that you appropriately address that because sometimes you'll have to address the pheochromocytoma first before taking care of the parathyroid or the thyroid cancer, right? Because the pheochromocytoma produces hormones that can cause the big problems during surgery if you're not aware that it exists, okay? So uh, you just need more information if you have questions or in doubt. Anyways, if you're interested in clear parathyroid information and what to do next, visit us at parathyroid.net. Be well.